So I ended up catching up on the toilet bowl yesterday, the game of the day yesterday. I was watching Sixers Lakers, so I wasn't able to completely lock in on the Pistons Wizards and what was the battle of futility and almost became like a, I don't know what phrase, but it became like a zeitgeist where everybody was like, oh, let's lock into the two worst teams in the NBA, the Wizards and the Pistons. Both were coming in on long losing streaks. The Pistons had a 13 game losing streak. The Wizards had a nine game losing streak, but I ended up watching the game in full on League Pass this morning at the time of this recording Tuesday morning. And man, the Pistons got clobbered. There were multiple points throughout the game where it seemed close, but let's be real, the Wizards were in control of that game the entire time, which was shocking because going into the season and during this season so far, I think the Wizards were the most unserious team in the NBA and the Pistons start to the season was absolutely shocking to me because while I didn't expect them to be like, you know, a top 10 seed or whatever. I expected this young talent to be better. And some of the coaching decisions have been fucking baffling to me. The disregard to Cade Cunningham and his development have been baffling to me as well. But I expected this game to at least be close. And the Wizards, through multiple points in the game, had an 8-point, 10-point lead. They had like an 8-point lead in the first quarter, an 8-10-point to 10 point lead in the second quarter before the Pistons pulled themselves back in. And then in the third quarter, led by Kyle Kuzma, the Wizards just ass-blasted the Pistons. And then more of that happened in the fourth quarter. And it was a pathetic performance all around by the Pistons, who are now on a 14-game losing streak and have taken the title from the Wizards very clearly as the worst franchise in the NBA right now and I feel bad for Pistons fans because I like a lot of their young players I like a lot of their talent but some of the decisions from the front office to the coaching staff have just been baffling to me you know doing shit like last year for example not trading Boyan Bogdanovich at the trade deadline and I get it you want to keep a vet guy around to help out Cade but to have the season you had last year with Kate only playing 12 games and to not trade him was baffling. Then how they spent the cap space this offseason. Okay, theoretically, I get Monty Morris and Joe Harris's fit on this team. You want to put good players around Kate, a nice backup point guard in Monty Morris. Getting a movement shooter like Joe Harris, and he was coming off of that really bad ankle stuff in the 2021-22 season. And... There was some confidence stuff going on there, but last year he shot 42% from three. I got it, but he wasn't even starting and, you know, his minutes were really low and then he got a few DMPs and now he's injured. You just have $20 million just sitting there doing nothing. Monty Morris has not played yet this year. So all that cap space you had in the summer is sitting on the bench collecting dust. And then I've had this issue last year when they were going double bigs, but Cade really wasn't playing. He only played 12 games last year. But starting the season, not only with double bigs, but also not starting Jaden Ivey, your fifth overall pick from the 2022 draft, that just made no sense to me. And look, I made a video about Jeremy Sohan and the point guard experiment and Victor Wimbanyama's development and all that stuff. That's a different situation because the Spurs are expected to be at ground zero of development. So I'm all for trying stuff. And Victor Wimbanyama is a generational, generational prospect. So when you compare him to Cade, who was the number one pick in the 2021 draft, Cade still needs help with players that fit around him compared to Victor where I just think he'll develop no matter what and so I'm kind of more lenient for the Spurs trying more stuff especially when they're in year one of this this is Cade's third year a lot of shit like the Pistons hopes and everything else that rides on Cade Cunningham's shoulders and it just seems like they are disregarding his development I don't know if it's because of a new coaching staff and all that stuff came in with a more different eye for something I don't know it was still baffling to me starting Killian Hayes over Jaden Ivey never got that 
starting double bigs. I Like I've said a million times, I love Isaiah Stewart. I don't like Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran together. And I don't care what the numbers say. The minus in the net rating isn't as bad as, you know, I make it out to be. But just fit-wise, it doesn't make sense and it's not conducive to Cade Cunningham, you know, if you want him to take that leap and find out if he's the guy or not. This is year three. This isn't year one anymore. And that second half of his rookie season, it's getting further and further and further in the rearview mirror. And the Pistons just haven't done anything to bring that out of him again. Why are you starting two bigs together? Why not just have Asar Thompson play the four? The Pistons at this point, they're the they're a laughing stock. There should be some changes in that front office. But at the very least, you got to identify the guys you want to roll with as your core for the future. And to me, Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Asar Thompson, and Jalen Duran are the four players that I absolutely would not part with, that I care about, that I only care about to develop this core. Everyone else is expendable, um, can be traded, or you find out, you evaluate if they should be on the team moving forward, like Isaiah Livers, for example. I like him a lot. He should probably be on this team moving forward as somebody, a glue guy that can fit around those core four players. There's probably a few others, Marcus Sasser, for example, but the fact that it took this long to put Jaden Ivey back in the starting lineup, look at Cade Cunningham's stats the last four games and the last four Ivey starts. It's a lot better. Now, Cade's not perfect. He needs to be more efficient. I would like to see him take more threes. He's taking too many mid-rangers for my liking. I would like to see him get to the rim more, too. There are ways for him to still get to the rim, even if it's a clogged paint, but man, that paint is clogged. No one is respecting Isaiah Stewart's three-point shooting. He's shooting 38% from three this year, but no one cares because they know that they could still help off of him. Kyle Kuzma was giving Isaiah Stewart all the threes yesterday. He only went one for seven. You can't run any movement stuff with Isaiah Stewart. And so the offensive sets get clunky because Isaiah Stewart isn't a natural perimeter four. And the only saving grace for the Pistons with that lineup is their rebounding. But you expect that. Otherwise, there would be no fucking point in starting those two together. And you're starting those two together at the expense of Cade. I mean, it, this is just this is just adherent by the Pistons. I hope they make some changes. I hope they actually make correct roster decisions, and it's kind of moving in that direction with Jaden Ivey finally back in the starting lineup. Those two work off each other so well. The data was there last year. Ivey's a pretty good catch-and-shoot shooter, and it would do Cade well to move off the ball a little bit more because, again, he doesn't have that lightning-fast first step. He's one of those guys that likes to be methodical, back you down, and all that stuff. And you need help with that. And to get help, you need a point guard like Jaden Ivey, who is just quick off the bounce, but he's proven to be a good catch and shoot shooter. Jaden Ivey had a good game yesterday. Look, uh, those Pistons players, they were trying yesterday. Killian Hayes was trying. Isaiah Livers was trying. Cade Cunningham was trying. Jalen Duran always plays hard, but there's just something functionally wrong with this team. And to me, it starts with these dumbass decisions from the coaching staff. And maybe Pistons fans think I'm talking out of turn here because I'm an outsider, but I mean, I watch these games and I'm just like, why the fuck is Cade Cunningham operating in a phone booth all the time? It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be this way. And just to put a cherry on top, I think Marvin Bagley has been fine as a backup five, but for some reason, James Wiseman, who scored a little bit in the first half yesterday, so I don't want to bag on him too much, but he was terrible in the second half and terrible on the defensive end all game as all the Pistons players were. But Marvin Bagley was a healthy scratch. The guy you paid $37.5 million to was a healthy scratch because you wanted to give James Wiseman a shot. Are you fucking serious right now? And those are some of the weird decisions Troy Reaver has made over the last few years. You didn't need to give Isaiah Stewart that rookie extension that early over this summer. Like, I didn't get it then, and I really don't get it now. Especially, it's going to be hard to move off of Isaiah Stewart. I don't consider Isaiah Stewart part of this core for the Pistons. If I was running the Pistons, I would be focusing on building around Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Asar Thompson, and Jalen Duran. Those are all players that I think can play well off of each other in the future. 
games that I think will fit well with each other, and you just gotta fill out the rest of the roster with other good players. But the number one priority right now, as moving forward, while you are going through this, what's clearly going to be a shit storm of a season, because I don't know, looking at the Pistons schedule, I don't know when the next win's coming. I don't know when the next time they'll play the Washington Wizards. And who knows, it's the NBA. They might get a random win here or there. But if you're looking at that schedule, you're thinking, oh shit, a win is going to be hard to come by for like another month, a month and a half. The number one priority right now should be Put the best roster around Cade Cunningham that you can. Boyan Bogdanovich will eventually come back. I don't know how much that's going to solve their flaws, but at least you have somebody who's a movement shooter, can make something happen off the bounce a little bit, and somebody you can start at the four. Ditch the double big lineup. I cannot believe in the Wizards game yesterday how long it took for Cade Cunningham to play with a non-double big lineup. It was about two minutes and 38 seconds in the second quarter. I tracked this because they started the game with the double big lineup. They took Cade Cunningham out about four minutes left in the first quarter, and they went with a spaced out lineup with James Wiseman at the five, and then Marcus Sasser, Killian Hayes, Alec Burks, and Isaiah Livers. And I'm like, why can't Cade play in that lineup? That is a theoretical spacing lineup that Cade needs to be successful. And they didn't do that shit for him until the two minute and 38 second mark in the second quarter. And then in the second half, they ditched the double big lineup a little early. They changed up the rotation a little bit. And Cade Cunningham ended up playing with just Jalen Duran at the five with uh, other guards and spacers around him. But at that point, it was too late. The Wizards were cooking. Kyle Kuzma was cooking. And in turn, they cooked the Pistons out of Little Caesars Arena. It, man, I feel bad for Pistons fans. As somebody who's a Cade Cunningham fan and made a video about how I think he's destined for stardom, I'm pretty pissed off watching this team. And like I said, this is different from the San Antonio Spurs where this is ground zero in the Victor Wimbenyama story and everybody needs to develop because Victor is still going to get his. He's freelancing and all that stuff. But Cade Cunningham's in year three. You're going to have to give this guy a big extension soon. And you still haven't found out if he's the guy or not because he hasn't gotten a fair shot. And that's bullshit. You know what's wild? The Pistons have won four games since last season's trade deadline. That's insane. Insanity.